and welcome to the William H. Pitt Center for tonight's home opener of your Sacred Heart University Pioneers against the University of Massachusetts Riverhawks. I'm Eric Onichefale alongside Julia Kennedy. Julia, you ready for tonight? I think I'm ready. A basketball season, I was always just, there's so much energy filled in a gym, and I'm psyched to get this season started. Psyched too, as they're announcing the starting lineups. We'll be right back on, with you for the tip-off. Welcome to the William H. Pitt Center of your Sacred Heart University Pioneers. And this is the home opener against the University of Massachusetts Riverhawks. I'm Eric Winnichefle alongside Julia Kennedy and Chuck Scott. He's our sideline reporter. Chuck, do you have any more information for us today? Thanks, guys. This is the first meeting between these two teams since 1999, when they're both a part of the New England Collegiate Conference, all the way back in D2, dating back to 1981. This is the first meeting between these two teams as Division I foe, so we'll see if there's many more visits on the next time around. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chuck and Julia. So you're ready for tonight? Oh, I'm definitely ready for tonight. Basketball season is always awesome, and it lasts for so long. We have literally until March to enjoy watching these two teams oh. play. And it's going to be an interesting matchup as well because it is really early into the season. You know, the Riverhawks have only played two games, and our own Sacred Heart Pioneers have only played one. So it could be an interesting thing to see how this game plays out. And like, you know, Chuck, like Chuck said, we face this team a lot in Division Two, but now we're both Division One schools for the first time, and for the first time since 99. That's the last time we played. So with, alongside Eric and Chevrolet, Julia Kennedy, we'll be right back right here for tip-off. And we're off. Sacred Heart now steals the ball. Bill Gaetano right now, number four, will control the offense. You know, I'm really interested, actually, to see how this plays out. Sacred Heart had a really great opener against Hartford last week, last Friday. They uh, really started the season off well and strong, and I think they're looking to continue on that and improve on last year's, last year's season. And, and Evan's, Evan Kelly misses the jump shot, and here comes UMass Lowe with... We have a foul. Yeah, it looks like we have a foul already. Refs are talking it over. Not even 30 seconds into, into the, the game. game. So UMass will take it. We'll take it out on the sideline. So Julia, look at this atmosphere we have here. It's pretty festive, I might add. We do have a pretty festive atmosphere, I, although I must say I wish UMass Lowell's colors were green because then it would be all Christmassy and <laughs> beautiful in here. You'd be psyched for Thanksgiving that's in a week. Any plans? You know, actually, I'm going to be going back to Washington State, seeing my family. Shout out to those Kennedys back there, but back to the game. And Marco Bengos Flores of the UMass Riverhawks will control the ball for them on offense. This corner. Take the ball into the... And a strong drive to kick out. And a three by Bengers. Off it, and, and Kane Broom will take control of the board. Kane, he has the sick handles. In the corner to Gaetano for three, and it's good. Sacred Heart up 3-0 early. It's a great looking three right there. They're probably pretty psyched to get the season going too, you know. Basketball players typically stick around for like the entire year. They never really have breaks. And, and Flores with a strong lefty drive. And here comes Phil, pushing it up. And to Barnett, he passes to Gaetano, one of the three tri-captains on this team. Down low to the big man, and he puts it in. Philip Nowicki, the center, and he's a freshman from Poland. Poland? Poland. Long he way to come. all the way to <laughs> Poland to get some D1 athletes. 
<laughs> a strong by, drive by Flores, and it's blocked by, by the Polish hammer, Nowicki. <laughs> and boom, all the way to the cup, and one. That's the way we want to start it. Fantastic strong start by the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Yeah, uh, who knew? <laughs> who knew they had it in them? Now we do. Now we know. And Broom will go to the line to finish the N1. Quick 5-2 lead here with 18-21 to go in the first half. Misses it. Can't complete the N1 then. Here comes Flores up the court now. Flores navigates around the pick. You know, these teams have waited a long time to have a rematch. It's been 25 years since last time they played in 1999. Remember the last, do well, you remember what you were doing in 99? 99, uh, what was I, like third grade? Hey. Those were the good times, yeah, you know what I mean? I know, now we have to deal with student loans and everything. Ugh. Nev gets it down to the NEC Player of the Week. Back out to Gaetano for three, runs in and out. UMass Low controls the boards, but a foul on Devin Barnett. Like we said, the NEC Player of the Week last week for his efforts against Hartford, an 18 and seven game. Oh, it's not, actually was not a foul on, on Barnett. Broom will take it out, pass it to Barnett. With a strong drive. And it looks like it's gonna stay Sacred Heart ball. 17.39 to go in the first half. Sacred Heart is up 7-4. Up top to Barnett. The alley-oop was in and out and secured by UMass Lowe. And here they come on the fast break. And Chad Hawley passes it down low. And Bengus can't control the board. Throws it away. It's going to be a turnover. Oh, no. The ref said that they tipped it. I didn't. Did you see a tip, Julie? I didn't see a tip. I did not see a tip either, but I guess that's why we're not refs, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Here we go, Sacred Heart on defense now. Holly from three off the screen, and it's good. Quick 7-7 tie game now, and Gaetano will bring it up for the Pioneers, looking to set up the offense. You know, even though it's tied 7-7, I feel like Sacred Heart is, is a little more fluid in their motions right now. They're working a lot better together. They're hitting these shots, even though we just missed this last one. It Long looks rebound. like the Riverhawks are struggling a bit more. Yep. Holly looking to coming off the screen. Kicks it out to Flores. Flores. Gets caught. Back out to Holly for three again. Misses, and Barnett will secure the rebound. And here comes Sacred Heart. Gaetano. To Kelly in the corner. And Barnett will control it. And a great entry pass by Barnett. And oh, a foul. The Polish hammer, Nowicki, tried to dunk it, but he will get the two points at the line instead. Just barely missed the nail on that one. He was looking to put him on the poster, but it was too late. I'm sure the rest of the season he'll get some great opportunities yeah. for that. And by the way, Julie, I'm also going to patent the Polish hammer or, or trademark. Is that what it Tra is? Yeah, trademark. Trademark. So if anybody uses it, I'm getting money. Oh, yeah. That's a great nickname. That's moneymaker. Right. And the wiki for the first free throw. And this is the first. And in comes Steve Glowiak, another one of the tri-captains. So Steve, Evan, and Phil are the tri-captains on this team this year. And he checks in for Evan. And the wiki, the second one. And that's in there. Gives Sacred Heart the quick 8-7 lead with 16-24 to go. And Jordan Allen, the red shirt junior, will come in for Philip New Philip Nowicki. As Eric said, Barnett was the NEC player of the week this last week, and that's because of his incredible performance against Hartford last week. He scored 18 points and was eight for 11 shooting, so really high percentage there. Had some fantastic shots going on and actually just in general he averages about 11 points on a team high with 52.8 percent 
And we're going to go to the replay now. So, Drew, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at the N1 here. He has Broom bringing it up the court. I told you, he's a sick lefty right here. Takes it all the way to the basket for the N1. I wish he could have dunked it, but he's too small. He just, like, threaded the needle yeah. in there, right in Almost there. Like, and here we go, back to the action now. Vargas. And it's up and offensive rebound by the UMass, by the Riverhawks, and it's good. Jihad Thomas, the redshirt freshman from Williamsport, PA, puts it up and puts UMass up by one. And he also commits the foul on the other end on Barnett. Barnett was looking to drive, but he used his hands. We got a timeout now. Welcome, welcome back to the William H. Pitt Center. The, your Sacred Heart Pioneers are down by one to the Riverhawks. 15.49 to go in the first half, and the, and the Pioneers will take it out under their own basket. On the floor right now, we have Phil Gaetano checking the inbound on the ball. We have Jordan Allen, Devin Barnett, Cam Broom. And the rest call it, it's a travel on Jordan out. Too many steps. So it'll be Riverhawks basketball. Crowd not happy about that last call, but it's still so early in the game. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. Checking in. Looks like we're getting Riverhawks down in, trying to make some plays down there. 24 takes a three, and he makes it. It's good. That's going to bring them up to 12 points, or four points ahead of the Sacred Heart Pioneers now. 12-8. 12-8, 15-23 to go in the first half. Steve Gloyak. Senior try captain with a strong drive. Pull up jumper. It's off the back of the rim. Secured by the Riverhawks. And here the Riverhawks are now looking to push. Screen for Vic. Three from the wing. That's good. God, they are hot on the threes right now. I think that's three in a row now they've made from the three-point line. And if they continue that. Those threes can be kind of deadly and putting it, bringing a team ahead of another team. And even though it's early, sometimes I can set you back for the second half as well. And you're right, Julie, because we just came out, we just came out of the break, and it was 9-8. Now it's 15-8 off two straight threes. 15-06 to go in the first half. Sacred Heart called a quick timeout. Coach Tina looking to settle down his team. You know, tell him to, you know, let's play some defense. Don't let's let the jitterbugs flow out now. Exactly. They've been playing a really fantastic offense, actually, so far. Playing really hard, dishing in to the inside, getting some of those quick pull-ups. They haven't really been taking any outside shots, but defense is definitely where you can win the game and take it back over. You've got to play solid defense, turn the ball over, and get it back onto your side of the court. Junior Tevin Falzon checks in the game, along with senior Evan Kelly, 34-2. and two. Now Kelly directing the offense. Kicks it to Allen on the wing. Looking to find Gaetano down low in the post. Kicks it back out to Allen. 15 to go on the shot clock, and Gaetano will direct the traffic. Tevin with the strong drive, but he's fouled. Say it's on the floor and won't count the basket. Gaetano is a key player, actually, for the Pioneers. He was the only Pioneer to start all 31 games last season. Yep, and they tried to get a quick inbounds pass, but it didn't go, but Sacred Heart will maintain with the ball. Ugh. Evan Kelly gets caught up in the corner and turns the ball over. Here come the Riverhawks now. Lance Crawford with the ball. Directing traffic. Calling out the play. Here comes the screen. Deep three again. Off the side of the rim, and Gaetano secures the rebound. And here come the Pioneers. Down 15-8 with 14-02 to go in the first half. Evan Kelly comes off the screen. Strong drive down to Faison. Puts it up and in. Great driving dish by E.K., number two. E.K. I'm quick with these. You got to keep up here. <laughs> 
Looks like they're getting back on the boards, though. That's what they need. 10 to 15, they're still down, but they're making the right moves in order to get back up there, in order to gain that lead back. Another three by the Riverhawks, and that's good. Seems like they got to get out on the shooters, right, Julie? Mm-hmm. Riverhawks are on fire. Alicia, Alicia Keys, anyone? No? Hey, almost there. <laughs> almost, almost there. there. Almost. 18, 10, 13, 15 to go in the first half, and Gaetano has the ball in the corner. Skip pass to Kelly, who looks to take his man off the dribble. Pull up off the side of the rim, and the Hawks secure the rebound again. And here comes Chad Hawley. Kicks it out to another strong drive. Back out to Hawley. Another three. In and out, and Gaetano secures the board again. He decides to step into a three, and it's good. Senior captain Phil Gaetano with the three. He doesn't just assist people, he can shoot too. Oh, he can definitely shoot, but wow, that's an impressive assist history. He sits fourth in school history with 545 assists. He only trails one person. And Matt Harris now with the Riverhawks with the ball to Chad Hawley. Strong drive, and it's good. 2013 now, 12 14 to go in the first half. Gaetano down with the entry pass to Tevin Falzon, but he loses the ball, and here come the Riverhawks. Pull up off the back of the rim. Jordan Allen will secure the board. So, Julie, what do you think the Pioneers need to do to get the game back in their favor? Right now, it looks like they're almost just being outworked. The Riverhawks are moving quickly, they're passing quickly, all of their movements are sharp. And so they're beating the Pioneers to almost every single ball. A lot of the rebounds, we got that rebound there. But I think what they need to do is just sharpen it up a little bit. They're playing just a little too lax. And they need to get back into it, into a game mode. And Gaetano now directing the traffic. Strong drive. Up and under. It's good. Phil Gaetano, five quick points to bring the Sacred Heart deficit down to five. 20 to 15 with 11.20 to go in the first half. And here's Lance Crawford now, the Riverhawks, directing traffic as well. Gaetano getting up on him, calling out the play. Out to Matt Harris, it's down low. And it's blocked by Jordan Allen, but they're going to call a goal 10. Uh. They're going to call a goal 10. So they're going to count the basket. But Julie, that was a strong defensive effort there. Oh, that is, that's exactly what we're looking for, to get a, a great game out of them tonight. That defense is the aggressiveness that you need to get, and they're stepping it back up. They're trying to slim that border down. and Coach Tina is also mad, too. Oh. He thought that was a clean block. He is angry. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to a replay now. Let's check it out, Eric. Oh, right yeah. of that. Going up and under. Phil Gaetano, like he said, five quick points. He does not just assist. They he almost look score. confused. I know. They thought he was, they thought he was going to probably miss them. He just kind of stood down at the basket, and the Riverhawk just watched him as he did that up and under. But on National Geographic, Riverhawks aren't good at you know, seeing in the daytime. That's, that's true. They're, they're really don't, not. Don't, don't quote me on that. <laughs> don't quote me on that, though. So. You've been watching a lot of features in that geo recently? Hey. Hey. Who knows? Got the fantastic band behind us. They have a lot of people in their band, actually. I don't know. It's fun to have at the games. We actually have a pretty good turnout as well for this game. It is the beginning of the season, so hopefully we'll see the, the stadium warm up a little bit, get a ton more people. But for now, I think we got a pretty great turnout. Yeah. But came out for the home opener to support their Sacred Heart Pioneers. We have yeah. literally the entire football team over there. Nah, I know. <laughs> uh, shout out to the football team, back-to-back -back <laughs> NEC champions. Yeah. So, What's up? Good, good for them. That's good. I always say that was one of my biggest regrets in life, never putting on the pad. Oh, uh, but hey. I'm doing this. Yeah. Now, now you're talking about it. I know. It's even better. I know. And you were a baller, too. You balled out there, didn't you? In a past life. <laughs> in a past life. Now back to the action. Kane Broom now will direct the offense for the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Picks up his dribble and down, passes it to the Polish Hammer. 
And Broom now will get the ball back on the wing. To Gloyak. Out to Kelly. Looking for the entry pass and gets it to Falzon with a jumper on the short corner. Misses it. Out of bounds. Riverhawk basketball. Philip Nowicki could not hold on to the ball. And it's going to be Riverhawk basketball. And so, Julia, down low, for, I was always taught big guys have to secure the ball because mm -hmm. right there, he smacked it out. If he just grabbed it with two hands, I don't think he would have had that turnover. Oh, exactly. I mean, they already have the height. They can reach up and really just grab it with one hand if they need to. But securing the ball is the most important factor. you got to make sure when you bring it back down, you don't have an aggressive low guy down there trying to get the ball, too. And a foul now on Philip Nowicki. Crawford looking to inbound the ball. Ooh. Gets it to Thomas. Thomas, he's a big guy down low. Up and under with the left hand. No good. Fouls on, secures the rebound to Nowicki, and here come the Pioneers on the break. Broom now looking for the screen. Gets it. Down to no to no Steve down Ooh. for the drive. And a foul. Just a little too late on the charge there. Thomas is going to be called for the foul on the Riverhawks, and Steve will go to the line for two. Getting those aggressive drives. They haven't been hitting very much from the outside, so those drives inside, those just up and unders right there, those are going to be key points for them, as well as these free throws. As annoying as free throws are, they can make or break a game. I know. I've seen teams lose games by missing free throws. It's such a tough thing to lose with, too. Because it's something that you can control. Exactly. Gloriak hits the first. He Devin is controlling his th shots there. Yeah. Devin Barnett will. I'm going to check a replay now. Replay of the strong drive by Gloriak. Wow, that was, a hard, that was yeah, a hard that was a hard hit, but hey, we got the free throws. Gloriak misses the second, and Lance Crawford will secure the ball for the Riverhawks. Gets it back and looks to set up the offense. Screen Crawford didn't really the work there. Out to Holly, who gets a screen of his own. Goes around Crawford. Dump pass. And Nowicki with the block again. And here comes Gloriak on the break. Out to Broom on the wing. Gloria gets the ball back to Barnett. Jumper. In and out. Ah, what a great block down there. I that know. was awesome. I told you, he's not the Polish hammer for nothing. <laughs> he's living up to the reputation, that's yep. for sure. And now the Riverhawks on offense. Chad Harley looked to call away for the screen, but he still got it anyway. A lot of pick and rolls on this team. Mm -hmm. Pull up, good. Still just hitting those outsiders. 24-16, Pioneer deficit, 8.52 to go in the first half. Broom with a nice drive and dish. Kelly, strong drive, floater. Doesn't get any iron and secured by the Riverhawks and here they come on the break themselves. Hall again, directions from the coach. How much you want to bet is the screen? <laughs> they got a couple moves that they like and they like to use them and Kelly with the foul on the block just a little late there shuffling his feet Pioneers are playing a lot harder on defense though you can see them moving a lot quicker with the River Hawks and I think that's giving them a little more fluidity in the defense but I think it's not really translating to offense now their offense is just struggling a little bit and Gaetano will check in for Kelly now. And Gloyak's going to check Holly. Here comes the double. Holly now gets the screen. Another screen for Holly. To the corner. Three. In and out. Gloyak with the rebound. And here come the Pioneers. Broom pull up for three. Misses. But a strong rebound by Barnett. But it's taken away, and here come the Riverhawks. Gaetano gets his hand in the passing lane, but it'll still be Riverhawk basketball. 
Right there, that was a smart play by the senior to at least stop the fast break. Exactly. And we're gonna go to break now with the U UMass Riverhawks up 24 to 16 at the William H. Pitson. Welcome back to the William H. Pitt Center with the UMass Riverhawks on top, 24 to 16 against your Sacred Heart Pioneers. With 7.54 left to go in the first half. Julia, what do you think the Pioneers should do to trim this lead? Pioneers are a bit inconsistent. While they're playing really great defense, it seems like their offense is just rushing a little bit too much. And while they're playing, getting those shots up on board, those up and unders, looks like their defense is. So they just need to level it out a little bit. Not slow the game down, but control it a bit more. Senior captain Phil Gartano is the leading scorer for the Pioneers right now with eight points. And a great defensive stand. That'll be Pioneers basketball. And here comes Gartano now. Looking to get, get in here with a you know, half semi full court press. Passes to Glowiak in the corner. Down low to Barnett. Lose the ball, but a foul. That's a lot of hands down there. You wow. can kind of see them like flailing around by the winter or the yeah. winter hawks. <laughs> the river hawks, excuse me, wrong team. Do you even know what a river hawk? What is a river hawk? You know, I was wondering the same thing. I'm kind of imagining like a like a hawk peacefully, on maybe sitting just on top of the river. river? Yeah, <laughs> Barnett gets the inbounds pass. Strong mm -hmm. drive off the side of the backboard. And it's no good. And here come the river hawks. Crawford now passes it. Sweet spin move. Up and under. No good. And here comes Broom on the rebound. He's a one-man fast break himself to Gloyak. Gets it back. Gaetano now off the screen by the Polish hammer. They're not moving very much down there. As you can see, there's a lot of standing. They're trying to get those outside shots, I think. But look how much space they have down there. They need to really utilize the key and the Polish hammer, if you will. Try to get a download to Barnett, but he's fouled again. Well, hey, chances to get points. They just got to make sure that these chances count, and they're getting these points so that they can get themselves back on the board. They're eight points behind. About now, six minutes, 45 seconds left. And now the Riverhawks, I believe, are in the bonus, so it'll be one and one for the rest of the time out now. 6.45 left to go in the first half. Got a sub in. I'm sorry, your fave Polish hammer is going to come out for no. a bit, but I think he's been in the entire time, so he needs, need he needs tell, a break. I need to tell Coach Tina to give him some more minutes. <laughs> Barnett now with the first of maybe two. Makes the first. Going to go to a replay now. Let's see what we got here. So we're gonna attack. Look at that. That was a nice entry pass into Barnett, but... He was able to get the call. Too many hands. They, they were playing with their hands, not with their feet. <laughs> That's the issue. I think the Riverhawks' problem right there, when they got it down low, they want to have their hands up, not mm -hmm. flailing away like a baby. Exactly. Not like a Riverhawk. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got to get their wings in check mm -hmm. and play more solidly. But looks like their mascot's just getting into their heads a yeah. little bit. Just a little bit. And Barnett now going to the line. See if he can hit the second. 24-17 Riverhawk lead. 6.45 left to go in the first half here at the William H. Pitt Center. Home opener. And Julie, it's also the 50th birthday for men's basketball at Sacred Heart. Happy birthday, basketball at the, Sacred Heart. Men's basketball, excuse me. Should have should have brought a cake to the game. I don't know. So does that mean Big Red is 50? No, because I don't know. I don't know. Are the other programs as old? But, well, happy birthday, Brick Red, either way. Yeah. Next time I'm bringing a cake. We'll celebrate late. Oh, we will. We will. 24-18. 6.38 left to go in the first half, and the Riverhawks now will control the offense. Holly, dump pass. Great block there. They're going to call a foul. 
that's unfortunate because we could see them working really well on defense together down there, coming together, blocking them, making sure they're not getting in close down there, but. Crawford with three from the corner, misses, but he gets his own board, puts it up and in, a strong move by Lance Crawford, the freshman guard from Davie, Florida. You know, you really got to be getting those rebounds when there's three of your players by the hoop, but when one Riverhawk comes in, that's, that's when you got to be boxing out, getting those boards. And Barnett now follows it up with a jumper from the free throw line. Long two for Barnett, and that's good. 26-20, 6.04 left to go in the first half. Pioneers are down. And oh. a strong block by Jordan Allen. And here comes Cam Broom. Out to Gloyak for three. It's oh. good. It's good. 26-23, 5.50 left to go in the first half. And here come the Pioneers. That got the crowd rocking here at the William H. Pitt Center. And I got Julia rocking, too. She's screaming in my ear. <laughs> I am sorry. I was just getting a little excited. I couldn't hold it in. That was just a sweet and right we're gonna in check there. a replay of the three-pointer by the senior and here's the block by Jordan Allen the block that sparked the, the three-pointer three hey there uh -huh. we go there we go <laughs> back to the action now Sometimes all you need is just a little fan interaction, too, to get you, like, pumped back up, back into the game. Now they're only three points down. Pioneers could take this back and be ready and set ahead for the second half. They got the three on the transition now. 26-23. Riverhawk Lee with 5.50 to go in the first half. And we're going to see some full court pressure by the Pioneers. See if the Pioneers can create a turnover here. A little push off by a River Hawk. Seems like the River Hawks are trying to slow it down a little bit, get the Pioneers off their groove. You know, hopefully it won't work. I'd love to see some more of what we just saw. Oh, oh, oh a little bit of a trip there. And an elbow jumper is good for the River Hawks. They're coming strong back down the court, though. Moving a lot more. And Gaetano, swing pass to Gloyak in the corner from the three. No mm. good, but Barnett gets the rebound, puts it up. No good. And here comes Lance Crawford for the Riverhawks. He's going to bring it out and set up the offense. 23-28, 4.54 left to go in the first half. Pioneer deficit by five. Going to try to move it around a little bit, moving slower. Definitely trying to slow the Pioneers down. And Flores now calling for the screen. Gets it, splits the screen. Out to the three oh. by Cornelius off the side of the backboard. And Gloyak gets the ball and pushes it up to Kelly, who pulls up a three himself. Misses, and Jordan Allen with the rebound. Puts it up, no good, but Evan Kelly there. Can't put it in. And here come the Riverhawks now. Crawford by himself. We're going to get oh. a charge. Great defensive play by senior captain Phil Gaetano to cause the turnover. That is what they prep you for in practice. You know, if you ever had like either kind of an evil coach in high school, she would just make a stand there while she would charge at us and make us like flop back onto our backs. Yeah. But hey, then you, then you get the ball turned over back on your side if it works out. Hopefully, you know, you didn't break your tailbone on the way down, but. Yeah. <laughs> the charges definitely do hurt, folks. It's not, <laughs> not for the faint of heart. Not as easy as it looks. Nope. 23-28, 4.15 to go in the first half. Pioneers down by five. Gaetano looking to change that as he brings the ball up. Gets it to Kelly. He tried to wrap around pass to phase on, but he was not ready, and it's going to be a turnover for the Pioneers. You know, Eric, it almost seems like they're getting just a bit frazzled. They had that incredible play. They got real excited. They came back out, and they've been playing really strong, but almost just a little too, like, hectic on it. They're moving a little too quickly, sending passes with no one there, getting rebounds, but when they're putting the shots back up, they're just not finding the rim. So you're saying a little too fast for their own pace. Yeah, they're just, they need to get back on the same page. I hear you. And Kelly will secure that rebound off the missed three by the Riverhawks. Finds Broom with a strong drive. And they're going to call a foul on the drive. 
Like we said, it's going to be a one and one now for now to the rest of the end of the half. 338 left to go. So, Ju so Julia, knowing that you have that many. We're going to go to a break in a bit here. And we're going to break now with the score 23. Welcome back to the William H. Pitt Center where your Sacred Heart Pioneers face a five-point deficit as the UMass Riverhawks are up 28-23 in the first half with 3.38 left to go. So, Julia, are you liking what you're seeing from the Pioneers so far? You know, I'm liking things here and there. I like that I'm out here watching them play basketball. I've been really excited and ready for this season to start, but I'm ready for when they start playing a little more cohesively and they've kind of figured out their own pattern, their own rhythms of playing together. They are a really young team. They have eight newcomers this year, only three seniors. Cam Broom hits the first of the one and one. 28-24, 3.38 left to go in the first half. Broom hits the second. Three-point deficit now for the Pioneers. So we'll see the full court press applied now by the Pioneers again. Looking to get a quick steal. Flores of the Riverhawks now weaving his way through, but Broom is not letting them. And they got to be careful when they're playing those tough Ds and doubling up that they're not leaving someone open that could really make some waves down right. there. Right, and here goes Holly off the screen. Back to Flores on the wing. Gets the screen. Great close up by Falzon. To the corner. Uh -huh. Ball's dead. And the foul. Foul on Jordan Allen. So we were talking about free throws a little bit earlier, how they're sometimes key, or sometimes, a lot of times key to winning a game. If we took, take a look at some of the stats. Uh, UMass Lowell hasn't taken any free throws at all, while for the Pioneers, we've taken, there's been seven free throws, and we've been 57% from that line. So that could be really key in their success if they want to win tonight. But for UMass, I mean, if they're, if Pioneers keep playing great, solid defense, they're not giving them any free throws, then they could just be depending on those outside shooters out there. Flores now going one-on-one -on -one with Broom. Gives the ball up. Ball finds his way to Holly. Fake at the three. Holly now gets the ball. Coach Tina imploring the defense to step up here. Livingston now with the ball to Holly. Back to Flores, who contains the ball at the wing. 28-25, 2.50 to go in the first half. Pioneers down by three. Flores looking to get the ball down low, but no. And a three ball by Matt Harris brings the deficit now back up to six. 31-25, 2.35 left to go in the first half now. Broom now will set up the offense. The Riverhawks are really killing it on those three-pointers. That's, I think, where they're getting most of their points. I think they've made now five out of 13. Broom now jumper from the short corner. No, but Felzon there with the offensive board. Can't hold on to it. It'll be Riverhawks basketball. We were just talking earlier. He has to be strong with the ball, Julie. They got some butterfingers out there. Yeah. Holly now. Pass it to Flores, who bring the ball up himself. Met by Broom. Weldon. Flores now on the wing. Gets the screen. The pick and pop to Livingston, and that's off the mark. And Broom now, a one-man fast break he is to Gaetano. Hans Kelly looking for the entry pass to Felzon and gets it there. With a nice spin in the down low. Falzon oh. misses it. And the rebound by Flores. And here come the Riverhawks. Up by six. So 131 left to go in the first half. When you're down there with those short little shots right there, those are the ones that you need to count. They've, they've missed a fair amount of those. And instead have a better percentage from the three-point line than they do from inside the key. Flores looking at the clock now. A little nice dribble moving, nice handoff down low, but a strip by Gaetano. And he's going to bring it up himself. 
to Kelly. Nice stutter step, drive. Can't finish it off the glass. Rebound by Weldon of the Riverhawks, and here comes Holly. See, we're Th getting these great plays on defense and getting it back down the court, and then they're just they're just kind of like freaking out with the ball and not making those boards. You're right. Holly now calling off the screen, but it looks like there's some miscommunication there. Gets it from Weldon to Livingston to Flores. Gets the screen himself, but he decides to shoot the three anyway and it misses everything. <laughs> the and classic the, air ball yep, chant. And the Pine of Faithful is going to let him have it. And Jordan Allen is going to check in for Felzon for the last, let's say, 27 seconds with the Sacred Heart Pioneers down by six, 31 25 here at the William H. Pitt Center. I'd love to see them get some points on one of these last plays here just to because they've had three or four times down the court that they just haven't put anything on the board. So it's time to get back up there. Shot clock is turned off, so the Pioneers will look to get the last shot here. Gaetano calling out the play. Gets the screen. Finds Barnett. Strong drive. Loses the ball, but decides to shoot anyway. Misses. And Barnett puts it up yeah. off the alley, and we're going to count the basket. It was tough, but he made it anyway. So we're going to count that basket, and we're going to toss to our sideline reporter, Chuck, Sc Chuck Scott, with the Riverhawks down, up by four, with the other second pioneer. So Chuck, what do you got for us on the... As the one brace prime for the Sacred Heart Pioneers, Bill Gaetano with eight points and a couple of three-pointers. Sacred Heart coming out in the second half. We'll hope to reverse the record from last year at home, which is 10. See you at the desk. Thanks, Chuck. So, so Julia, what do, you, what do you like from the first half? Well, we're going to get a look at a replay here of one of those last times down the court. Let's take a look at this nice three here. All right, well. So, Julia, 31-27, you must like what you see so far. You know, I, I do for the most part. I do like what I'm seeing. The Pioneers were picking it back up at the end. The only issues they were having was just with finishing at the end on their offensive side of the court. But I love what I'm seeing on defense. They're getting in there. They're getting the ball back. Now they just have to finish on those. They just have to finish. So for Eric Rooney Chapley and Julia Kennedy, we'll be right back for the second half of the 50th birthday of Sacred Heart Basketball. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 